guys, Tarek Maryface here, and welcome to another Maryface Aviation video today. The Navigraph chart special. We're looking at the Jepson charts. Last time we looked at the radar minimum altitudes, and uh, today we're going to look at the stars. So, what is a star? Star stands for standard approach. Pretty basic, really. And we'll look at the chart just like we did last time. So, Glasgow here, as we said last time, we chose it because it's a big airport and it's got a few. It's got a bit of everything, but it's not hundreds of pages long, which is a bit of a, a drag. But I thought we'd look at the Stira 1 Alpha approach because this page is full of information and it looks a little intimidating. But actually, when you go through it and you break it down, it's fine. Now, stars can take you all the way to the final approach course, or they'll take you to, for example, a hole like this one. The Lebo one alpha and one a uh, two alpha and one Bravo arrivals, where you'd hold Atlantic or at Lebo. A lot of these actually make you hold Atlantic, uh, and then ATC would vector you in. But in any case, we'll do the one. We'll talk about the one alpha, uh, and talk about the chart in general. Just like last time, we've got a header. So in the top left, you've got the ICAO and the NASA codes, as well as the name of the airport underneath. And then you've got the identifier and the effective dates. So in this case, it was a 10 to Delta. And then the city, the country, and the type of chart in the top right. Again, just like in the reference charts, you've got the top box, essential or important information. So ADAS, airport elevation, and then other information about being vectored in. So in this case, aircraft on all routes may be radar vectored and by ATC, when radar is out of service, aircraft may be instructed to hold at Glass Moscow Whiskey for the Lanark to Delta or Atlantic for the Turnbury 1 Alpha. All of these stars will have a box. It may look slightly different, be in slightly different locations, but this box gives you a list of all of the approaches that are depicted in this chart. So in this one, you've got the 2 Delta, this Lanark to Delta, the Stero 1 Alpha, and the Turnbury 1 Alpha. And if I cycle through these charts, you can see that sometimes they'll be a little bit different, and sometimes they have less information than other times. It's all about what's relevant to what we're doing right now. So here we have Sierra 1 Alpha. When Glasgow Oscar Whiskey VOR is unserviceable, refer to star Glasgow Lima Whiskey 1 Echo on chart 10 2 Echo. So when the VOR is unserviceable, instead of doing this chart, we'll go on 10 2 and do the Glasgow 1 Echo. So 10 2, Glasgow 1 Echo. And as you can see here, it's the exact same route. It's just that it's slightly different. We're not using the Glasgow VOR, we're simply using the Perth uh, VOR and the Glasgow locator instead. So coming back to our original chart, let's have a look here. So that's the information I had. In red, you've got some, when it's in red, information in red, it's usually speed related. So here it says speed. Cross the SLP or three minutes before holding facility at 200 minutes, uh, 250 knots or less when at or below flight level 140. And the SLP, as they helpfully point out below, is a speed limit point. And you'll see it as SLP somewhere along the chart. So if we go here from Perth to Grice, Grice has SLP above, so this would be the speed limit point. So we need to cross the SLP at 250 knots or below if we're below flight level 140 or three minutes before our hold. So for instance, if we're told to hold at Stira, which is part of the route, then three minutes before we arrive at Stira, we should be at 250 knots or below if we're flying below flight level 140. Sounds like a mouthful, but again, it's actually quite simple. Great, so we've understood this little bit here and we've, thought, we've talked about these here. So let's go ahead and talk about the depictions itself. Again, the labeling is very similar. You've got the latitudes here, you've got the longitudes along the bottom, but notice because we've got a box here, the longitudes continue at the top of the box. And we've got other airports. So note that you've got Edinburgh, that's quite a big airport. You've got Dundee, which is a small airport, and here Lucas. If you go look at Lucas, you've got a different symbol because it's a military airfield. And don't forget to read everything on here that may be of value to you. So, for example, warning, do not proceed beyond Lanark or Stira or Turnbury without ATC clearance. So in our case, 
to one alpha, we don't go through onic, we don't go through ternary, but we do go through stira. So we can't pass stira without ATC pairs. Continuing on the chart, you'll see up here, we've got the Jepson uh, wings with, an, with a north and indicating true north. Remember that true north would be different from the, the, uh, in the navades, which are, would be in magnetic north. You've got these big numbers here as well. These are basically MSAs, so 5,100 feet, 4,400 feet, or grid bars. Uh, I forget which one's the good point. I will look it up and I'll let you know in the comment section below. As we saw last time, this big black arrow, 3,432 feet, that is the highest obstacle depicted in this chart. So as long as you follow these routes, you should be okay, even if you, as long as you're above this. And really, you should be okay in any case. You see a red circle, and it says Gao VOR, Glasgow VOR. It's 25 miles around the VOR, okay? These red circles, 25 miles, and you see them in the approach, um, approach charts. You see them here um, as a little bit here on the side, and I'll be always a 25-mile radius as far as I know. Again, feel free to correct me if I am wrong. In any case, so here we've got the MSAs. For that area, so 3,000 feet, 4,900, and 4,800 feet. Excellent. And as you can see, the the navades will usually have the information you need to be able to both tune them and identify them. So, the frequency, the identifier, and the Morse code. Great. If we come down here. You see a box here, and it says, shows different holds. If a chart is very busy, like this one, they're not, they try, Jefferson tries to avoid adding additional hold uh, diagrams because they'll just make things confusing. So they'll put them in a little box in the diagrams here in the corner. So, for example, Stira, we may be asked to be held, held to Stira since we're doing the Stira 1 alpha departure, uh, arrival, sorry. So you get this information. Once at Stira, we do right hand turn holds. So standard holds uh, with the outbound of 056 and inbound of 236 degrees. And that um, and that we, we this is a DME as we turn, sorry, into the inbound at DME distance 30. And we come back in on the 236 until we hit DME distance 26.0 radio 056, which is steer right here. You can see steer right here is uh, DME distance 26. If you go to the right, it'll give you more information. Flights inbound to Glasgow from the flight information region must observe the normal procedure for zoning controlled airspace and should anticipate zoning clearance via and then for the different arrivals. So we're looking at Stira 1 Alpha, Stira in sector Perth to South. So I'm not 100% sure what that means to be honest, but in this area, we're going to be expected to we're going to be expected to follow normal procedures, which not not really too uh not not too too much information for us in terms of the practical sense because we'll just go see the aircraft and go and see what they have to say. Then you've got the descent planning, and that's quite interesting because what it's telling you is what sort of altitudes to expect when you're coming down from the cruise. So pilots should plan for possible descent clearances as follow. Again, we go down to our arrival and the steer went alpha at seven thousand or equivalent flight level by steerer. So what they're essentially telling us is we need to be by, by 7,000 feet or flight level 070 by this waypoint. Okay, so useful information to have when you're thinking about descent planning or just in general thinking ahead of the game. At the bottom, this is the most useful part because if this really scares you in the beginning, and usually when, when a chart is really heavily dense like this, the first thing I do, I do before I actually do the proper scan, is I go to the bottom of the page and I find the star that I feel that I know or think I'm most likely to get because it gives you a text description of what you're expected to do. So we go to Stereo 1 Alpha and it says at Perth, take the radio 219 from Perth to Bryce, turn right, intercept the Glasgow Oscar Whiskey radio 056, inbound to Stereo. So simple. And then if you go here, you see that's exactly what they said. At Perth, take the radio 219 to Bryce. Then we turn right 
numbers are increasing, so yes, we're turning right. And then we go to Stira. Okay, and that is the start. So then if we're told to hold to Glas at Glasgow, then we just follow the radial link and we hold it to Glasgow VOR. And that's really, really useful because you can do the approach just from reading this in a way. If you have all the information you need, read this, you know what you're expected to do. So let's go through the approach itself. We start at first, intercept the radio 219. You can see there in, in thick, in thick uh, black letters with an arrow and the label stereo and alpha. Here you've got a little 18, that's to say that the leg is 18 nautical miles. Now note, this is a VOR without a DME. So how are you gonna know there's 18 nautical miles? Well, there are a few ways, for instance, you can see here it says this DME 43.4 from, uh, from Tala. So you could intercept that, or, <coughs> excuse me, Probably easier still is to use the Glasgow Oscar Whiskey VOR, which has a DME as well, and see that you're intercepting the 056 radio at distance 32.2. So you're using two nav aids. Once they coincide, then you can easily use three reference sources, the radio 219, the radio 056, and the DME distance 32.2. They will all coincide, proving you that you are at Grice VSLP. So make sure your speed is below 250 knots. And then turn right onto 236 degrees on the inbound radio for the Glasgow of 056. And once the DME reads 26, radio 056, you're there. And this distance will be 6.2 nautical miles, which again, you can do with some basic max 32.2 uh, minus 26 is indeed 6.2 nautical miles. And that point will be steering. If we're told to hold, then we come down here and we look at the holding steerer. Okay, so it's on the inbound 236. Once we hit steerer, we make a right turn onto the outbound of 056. Continue there until you hit DME 30, turn back into the inbound, and that's the hold for you. So again, we've, break, we've broken this down. It came out as being really complicated, but actually it's really simple. Uh, once you break it down, it looks incredibly confusing and complex. But by looking at every individual point and then putting it together, it creates a very clear picture of what is expected of you. Now, a lot of people play flight simulator, like to go on their PMDG or their um, or their uh, Dash 8 Majestic or whatever it is, uh, airliner uh, sim you have, FS Labs and they'll just load the star in from the FMS, which is a realistic way of doing it, and it's, it's also fun, it's interesting, it's about management. But if you really wanna practice good, strong, like pure flying skills, and do this raw data, use these, set them up on the map, sorry, set them up on the map, map, map uh, boxes, and try it out. Just try uh, doing this using raw data, using the needles, using the DME, Flipping the frequencies is appropriate. It's always a fun challenge to do and pan fly, obviously. If you want to use the autopilot in the beginning, go for it. It does help get a lot of the work laid out. But this is really good practice to get your piloting skills up a notch. That's it for this video, guys. I did speak for a long time, um, but I hope we went through this in detail and you can see how it is. You can learn how to read these charts now and use them for your approaches and hopefully you'll do some raw data approaches please do that for me and let me know how it goes if i made any mistakes feel free to point them out in the comment section below be polite about it please uh i may be ignoring you otherwise um and tell me if you try these on the simulator tell me how it went tell me uh the experience you had because most people who play flight sim and then i make them try raw data the first time it, it really takes them aback they like it. it. It takes them back in a good way because they realize how much they can learn from this. So that's it. Uh, I'm Tarek Merkis. If you liked it, please share, comment, subscribe. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. And happy flying.